I'm a bad boy. G'day guys, in this video I'm just going to go through how to change the serpentine belt on the Mazda B250 or Ford Rangers with a 3.2 litre 5 cylinder diesel. So changing it out is just a little exercise to get myself familiar with how to do it and it also gives me a spare, the one that I take off the car becomes a spare, I've got a brand new one installed. So if it ever does break when I'm out and about I know that I have a spare that already fits and I know how to change it, how long it's going to take me, what tools I need and how difficult it's going to be. So I've had a look through the workshop manual and it does suggest a method which includes taking out the airbox. I'm going to try and do it without taking out the airbox because I've got a snorkel installed. To get that silicon hose from the snorkel back onto the airbox, it can be annoying and sometimes you have to take off the wheel guard so you can push on the other side of that silicon hose to get it back onto the airbox. So what I'm going to try and do today is remove the belt and put the new one on without removing the airbox. We will be taking out the hose but we won't be removing the airbox. So the belt that I've got is Gates, it is 7PK3105. So there is only one belt in there, so it's important that you carry a spare. And we'll just have a look at exactly the path it takes and what it is running. So this is the diagram that this serpentine belt is currently in and we'll have to go back in. So you see at the top left we've got the alternator, then it goes through the tensioner around the power steering, back through the tensioner, then you've got your crankshaft, fan, air conditioner, water pump, and then there is an idler pulley at the top. Now when we're putting it back on, we will start from the bottom is easier, and then doing the top last with the idler pulley being the last thing that we tuck underneath. You can put your weight on that and bend it under that pulley. So we'll just zoom into the tensioner, and you see this little square hole that they've drawn, that is a half inch, half inch ratchet or breaker bar. You can tilt that tensioner and release tension. The little round hole next to it, will accept a 6mm drill bit or a small podgy bar. That way you can remove the breaker bar with something in that hole and the tensioner will be untensioned. It'll be locked off. You can remove the belt, put it back on, put your breaker bar back in, take your podgy bar or drill bit out and then the tension will be reapplied. There's no torque settings needed at all. Alright, so here's a look at the serpentine belt, just so you're familiar with the way it goes. It's kind of hard to see at the moment, but we'll get a better look later with the GoPro. That's the air conditioner water pump. Disconnect the airflow sensor, three clips for the airbox lid, 7mm socket or flathead screwdriver to loosen that air hose clamp. The engine bay cover, or the engine cover, just pops up. There's four clips in either corner. And then the other end of this hose is another band with a 7mm socket or a flat blade screwdriver. This is the half inch tensioner down there so we want to get this pipe out of the way. So just loosen that off, leave it connected, I'll just put it in the air box. Now because I'm going to keep this belt as a spare I'm just marking which way is the front of the car or you can mark the rotation because if you're reusing a belt you want it to go on the same way it did before. 6mm drill bit that goes in this hole here just to the right that is just to hold the tension. Now with the GoPro we can get a better look of the belt path and over here is the air conditioner and water pump. So breaker bar clockwise to release tension and then put your drill bit or podgy bar in. Now here's what I marked up before on this belt which I'll use as a replacement. Just want to compare it to the new belt, make sure it's exactly the same width and length which this one is so it's good to go. So here's what that half inch tensioner port looks like with the drill bit. New belt, drop it in from the top, but I recommend starting from the bottom. Um, get it wrapped around some pulley so it just doesn't drop down. From the bottom, looking up here, you can see the air conditioner and water pump side. And you just want to get it tracking in the middle of every pulley throughout the whole run. So go through them, make sure it's not too far to the outside, but it's also not too far to the inside. So it's just sitting in the middle of each pulley. And then double check. Obviously the pathway should be correct or you wouldn't have it around each pulley, but just double check that everything's done correctly. So again, this is from the bottom looking up through the bash plate, which is the easiest place to start from. This is the crankshaft. Over here we've got the tensioner pulley and power steering down the bottom. This is from the top looking down, breaker bar's in, ready to remove that drill bit. Once that drill bit's out, the breaker bar moves to the left to put tension back on and we start putting all our air hoses back on 7mm. Don't have to do it too tight, you can give your airbox a clean and your filter a clean. I didn't give it a full wash, I just sort of tapped it out on the bench and quick vacuum. So we got the 
clip or the clamp for the air hose, the three clips for the filter housing lid, and then we've got this airflow sensor to clip back in. Now the engine cover just pushes down, you just got to push in all four corners. Okay, that's it for the serpentine belt replacement. Pretty easy job. You just need a 7mm socket and a half inch drive, as well as a 6mm drill bit or something of a similar size, podgy bar, just to hold the tensioner in place. So for $85, now we've got a spare serpentine belt. There's just the one belt on this car that drives everything, so it's important to have a spare. When you're putting the belt back on, you want to make sure that it's tracking on the pulleys properly. Take your bash plates off, get underneath, and work around the pulleys that way. It's a lot easier. Trying to do it all from the top is pretty difficult. Getting the 6mm drill bit to hold the tensioner in place is annoying. I used a pair of vice grips just to hold it and twist it around the belt. Then I can release the vice grips once it's in place. I found that a little bit easier. So you can do it without removing the airbox. Just get that hose disconnected and out of the way. Makes it a little bit easier. Take your bash plates off and you can do the whole thing in less than an hour. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching. In this video, I'm just going to go through how to change. But changing it.